Hello and welcome to the second part of our timeline tutorial series. Last time I gave you a condensed theoretical overview of the timeline API. And in this tutorial we are doing the craftsmanship and implement a real example. We want to create a custom track that allows us to change the settings of a light component. Be aware that we don't implement a mixer which would allow us to blend clips together. Those mixers will be covered in the next tutorial of our series. Today we only want to focus on the very basics of the Timeline API, so we don't concentrate on the blending of our custom light clips. In other words, it won't be possible to make smooth transitions between two light clips, but I think it's a good start to understand the concepts of the Timeline API. Okay, then let's jump in. As mentioned before, we want to manipulate light components with the timeline. So the very first thing we need to do is to create a track asset which represents a row in the timeline in Unity. So switch to Unity, create a new script and call it light control track. Replace the mono behavior inheritance with a track asset inheritance. Press Alt Enter and select using Unity Engine .timeline to import the timeline namespace and to make track asset available. Get rid of the update and start events and give your new track a specific color by using the track color attribute. The attribute takes three color values, red, green and blue. The values are normalized between 0 and 1. Since in most applications, color values are given in a range between 0 and 255. I'm also used to type in the values in that range. To map the values between 0 and 1, just divide them by 255. Now we need to specify that our track should be able to manipulate a light component. In order to do that, we need to decorate the track asset with a track binding type attribute and pass the type of the light component. That's all we need for the custom track in this example. In Unity, you're now able to add a light control track which expects a light component. For example, you can drag the directional light of the scene into the track. That's all well and good, but yet you can't add clips to the track. Custom clips are separate scripts which inherit from playable asset. So create a new script called light control clip. Open it and make it serializable. Again, press Alt and Enter and import the system namespace. Instead of mono behavior, inherit from playable asset and implement the I timeline clip asset interface. Import the missing namespaces and use Alt and Enter as before to generate the needed code and to solve the errors. The timeline clip asset interface provides your class with clip caps which specify the properties of the clip. Since we don't want to blend clips together or want to do anything else with our clips, we return clipcaps.none. Inheriting from playable asset forces you to override the create playable method. Later, this method will generate the runtime playables which will actually manipulate the light component. Now we need to tell our light control track that it can contain light control clips. Therefore, decorate the track with the track clip type attribute and pass the type of your light control clip. In Unity, another entry in the context menu of the track appeared. You can add clips, but get many errors. That's because Unity tries to preview the clip in edit mode and wants to generate runtime playables. But if you can remember, we haven't implemented the create playable method of our clip yet. So delete the clip for now and create another script called light control behavior. Instances of that script will represent runtime playables. Let's inherit from playable behavior and make the script serializable. We add serializable fields for the settings of the light component we want to change with the timeline. So like color, intensity, bounce intensity and range of the light.
Back in the light control clip script, we implement the create playable method. To use the light control behavior as a playable, it must be encapsulated within a script playable object. To do that, type in script playable of type light control behavior and call the static create method. This internally clones the template and encapsulates the clone within a script playable object. The generated clone is then returned and used as the runtime playable. Add a serialized light control behavior field which acts as our template. When adding clips in Unity, we don't get any errors anymore. We are not allowed to blend clips together because we used clipcaps.none at the very beginning of the tutorial. Also we can change the settings of the template which is used to generate clones. Yet, we just generated the structure of our timeline extension. The actual manipulations on the light component are missing. We need to override the process frame method, which is called each frame when the timeline is played. Within that method, we can do the manipulations on the light component. So override process frame in the light control behavior. The light component is given as the player data parameter. We need to cast it first and check if the cast worked out. Then we just assign the color, intensity and other settings to the light component. In Unity we notice that changing the settings of the clips has a direct effect on the light in our scene. Play around a little bit and celebrate your success. We encounter just one problem. The light component keeps the settings of the last played clip. When no clip is played, the light settings should be set back to the default. Even worse, the settings are kept after the timeline has finished. This will lead to really bad side effects and hard debugging sessions. To fix this problem, we must remember the settings of the light component before they are changed by the timeline. A boolean flag marks if the first frame has been processed already. In order to restore the settings, we need to save them in temporary variables. In process frame, before we manipulating the light component, we check the first frame happen flag. If no frame has been processed yet, we store the light settings in the temporary variables and set the flag to true. The next step is to restore the settings when the clip stops playing. In the Unity examples linked in the description below, they do the reset in onplayable destroy. But this only works when using mixers, which we don't use in this example. I found out that in our situation the only way to reliably reset the light settings is to use onBehaviorPause. So override onBehaviorPause and clear the first frame happen flag. Within the method we need to somehow access the light component, but sadly on behavior pause doesn't pass a reference. That's why we must store the reference to the light component manually in a private field. If the light component isn't null, we are allowed to reset to the default values. Now everything works fine and our custom track and simple clip are finished. Thanks for watching the tutorial. Next time I'll show you how to blend clips together and make smooth transitions using mixers. If you liked it, please support us on Patreon. That would be really great. Or maybe you want to join our weekly newsletter. Give us a like, subscribe to our channel. At least always keep developing. Yeah, and have a nice day. It's your sensei.